In this video, I'll be talking about how I managed to finish the Dream Bandits proof of concept footage, the making of, the steps I took, and how I managed to find time to finish it off on top of my full-time job. As for what Dream Bandits is, I'll talk about that some other time. And I'm going to stay away from the writing and the pre-production side of how this came to be. A few years ago, I did a lot of experimentations on After Effects where I would try and replicate the old analog look, the old celluloid animation look, which is to replicate some of the lighting flicker, the dust and scratches, as well as some noise. I looked at retro anime, retro cartoons, and just retro animated films in general. I know that doing traditional animation was out the option, so having to replicate that look and feel as much as I can on After Effects would be the best option for me to go. Actually, I did a whole tutorial on replicating this effect in After Effects and how you can achieve that VHS look later on, so please find those videos on my YouTube channel. For the trailer, I decided I wanted to board out how the trailer would play and how it would look in animatic. So I actually did the trailer using Adobe Flash or Adobe Animate, and then I slapped it all together with Adobe Premiere. There are two reasons why I board with Flash. Number one, I'm really familiar with Flash and I've used it for many years, over a decade now. And number two, well, the drawing tools in Flash aren't that great. But what's great about that is that you can't really salvage your drawings, so in boarding, it's ideal to just keep moving forward and boarding rough. I could have spent more time looking for royalty-free music, but I chose to go with Madonna's Like a Prayer because it captured the overall vibe, tone, and attitude that I wanted with Dream Bandits. Since this is kind of paying tribute to late 80s and early 90s stuff, to me I felt that gospel and pop rock made this aesthetic and time period more specific. And it's a lot of fun. As for the animation, I did all the animation work in TV Paint. TV Paint is one of my favorite programs I use for traditional animation style types of work. I've used it in Wolf Song, I've used it in Tiny Nomad, and so far I've been using it a lot. And it's a program that allows me to actually paint my frames. I would do all my roughs first, be very gestural and loose, and then I would tie them down on another layer. This would still be considered rough animation, it's just that I'm clarifying all the details and the aspects of the character design. I would also clean up color, shade, and light the animation using TV Paint, all done in the same program. Because when it comes to just the character animation, I just like to keep everything in one program or one pipeline. But I like to do other things such as backgrounds and compositing in other programs. Speaking of which, I did the backgrounds in Photoshop. I've always done all my backgrounds for my animated films in Photoshop because before I actually wanted to go into animation, I actually wanted to become a concept artist and I participated in a lot of speed painting challenges back in the day with CG Talk and all the speed painting techniques that I learned over time is what I applied with backgrounds. There's something I forgot to mention. Some people are wondering whether I do my layout and backgrounds first, then the character animation, or do I do the character animation first and then the backgrounds? Well, for this case, I actually did all my character animation first with a very rough layout. Super rough. It's just really scribbles to indicate where the characters are standing. And then I would draw backgrounds later on once all the animation is cleaned up and colored. Because during my time at CalArts, teachers emphasize that we don't have a lot of time to make our films and we have to emphasize on what discipline we want to hone in and focus on. So for me, I wanted to focus on storyboarding and animation and make that shine more. So I would spend more time on those first. Those are my main priority and things like backgrounds and colors, those are second priority and I can just speed paint or rough it up quickly in a short amount of time. This is because during my time at school, we don't have a lot of time to finish a whole short film, so we had to find shortcuts or start selecting which to prioritize. This is so that when recruiters looked at my portfolio, they knew that I was more into storyboarding or I could do animation. Nowadays, since I do have a job and I do have stable income, I could spend as much time as I want to with backgrounds, the look, and everything else. I get people asking me how I managed to finish a proof of concept or an animated piece while on top of my full-time job. The thing is, I would just spend a short time, maybe an hour, working on this project when I had the time after work. The early stage of the project, I was focusing on other projects, so I would only touch on it for a few times within the week. When I actually started boarding, I was still working on my animation tutorial course. So during that time, the only thing I got done were the storyboards and some animation, but no backgrounds. Around fall last year, I decided to take a month break from work. This is so that I could figure out more of my permanent residency situation. So I did have to be out of the United States for the time, but for the time being, I did bring my Wacom tablet and I did work on all the animation from there. A month later, I came back and this is when I decided that I would have this trailer done by the next two or three months. 
So every day I would spend about two to three hours after work or whenever I'm free, just working on the project, slowly doing animation, coloring, and backgrounds. The ideal thing is that I didn't really have any priorities after work. I could just work on whatever I wanted to, and I chose to do this. During the final month or the last two weeks, it was crunch time. I basically made that my crunch time. I would work four to five hours after work hours, just working on the project, just trying to meet the deadline that I wanted to. When it comes to the near end of the project, I tend to crunch because it's just nearly done. And knowing that it's the last mile for the marathon, I could just sprint until I finish the job instead of just sprinting throughout the whole race. I want to let you guys know that I do not support crunch time or enforce crunch time that's a lifestyle. Although I work many hours, I still get enough sleep. And even if I don't get enough sleep, that's only for like once or twice for the week. And the last stage is consisted of just cleanup work and other labor work, so just in between Things that I don't really need to think hard about. So if you guys really, really have to do crunch time, I advise you to do it during the last few days of your project until it's deadline. But this also means get some sleep and don't spend all-nighters. Because to function properly, you need enough sleep, and also I have a full-time job that I have to go to work with during the day. Like I did for the early look tests, I did all my compositing in After Effects. An issue that I noticed is that the original animatic was 30 FPS, whereas the animation was 24 FPS, so this did affect the timing of my shots when I did bring them back into Premiere. So there were times where I would have to make a frame hold out longer, or I would have to make a transition last a bit slower. So just a heads up for everyone using storyboards, make sure that the animatic matches the 24 frames per second or matches the frame rate you're gonna go with for animation because timing is important. Making the decision to upload the proof of concept was kind of hard because when it comes to original ideas and trying to pitch around, I get advice from my coworkers to keep projects secret when you're pitching around to studios. But when I see the trailer, it's not really saying anything about the story and the characters. It's just fun visuals with fun action. I have to admit, before I put the trailer up online, I was kind of banking that small teams, small studios, or even major studios would reach out to me and ask me to pitch Dream Bandits as a project that they'd like to work with. And in the videos I made about working on personal projects, I did talk about having a goal or what you expect out of it in mind. Yes, I did think that more development would reach out to me, but at the end, I also wanted to get more supporters, more followers, open other opportunities, and just finish an animated footage. Not many people can say that. So what's great about it is that I got people interested in supporting the project and people asking me whether there'd be a Kickstarter or crowdfund for a project like this. I'm a firm believer that if doors close, some will open. And if I had the chance to grow this project, any venue is worth exploring. So constantly reminding myself about that statement I just made, it gives me a good reason to keep working on personal projects because sometimes I tend to get lost in the ideal goals or the ideal wants that I want for a project, but real life doesn't always work the way you want it to. But even if the response and interest and the support is small, it's still great enough in my book. And I also know that if I work on other projects, I will continue to build more followers and supporters. But at the same time, explore other properties and ideas that I can develop sometime in the future too. There's a lot of different stories, characters, and scenarios that I want to tell, but at least that if I do want to return to a project like this, I have something to work with, and I have a proof of concept now. I have people to prove that a project like this does exist. And if I chose to make something out of it and seek funding, I have a proof of concept to show that this is what the end product may look like, this is what I can do, and it helps build trust with the community and my projects. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the trailer, how I made it, and the thoughts I had when I was working on it. I think producing a video like this where I talk about an actual personal project of mine while addressing some of the thoughts I had about personal projects is highly beneficial because it gives more perspective on the circumstances of what I'm thinking when I am working on these projects. If you guys like these type of videos, please let me know and I'll try and dig up some personal projects I've done in the past and talk about what my mind was going through while I was working on them. Anyways, thanks for hearing me out, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.